Uh, today, as for the message I want to bring, and when Michael uh, shared with me and Pastor Sunita shared with me the theme for your conference or for your missions rally, I thought it was fascinating, really. And it's taken from 1 Corinthians 9, uh, verses 22 and 23. And I've summarized it this way. He says, uh, Paul, this is Paul, he said, I have made myself a servant to all. And that is key. Servanthood is key. That by all means I might save some. Paul, a servant of Christ, set apart for the gospel. He made himself a servant that by all means. The emphasis here is all means. It means by all possible means. It means by whatever means. All means. And as I was, uh, and, and so I entitled the message this way, every means to save everywhere, or to save everyone everywhere. Now you know not everyone will get saved. But at least the gospel goes to everyone. And that some might be Safe. And as I pondered over this, and I've spoken on mission messages on many occasions from different passages, including the Old Testament, but when they gave me this, and you know, <laughs> I have changed the way I preach many years ago. You know, I, I just basically will pray and say, Lord, you know the people, you know their hearts, you have the now word, you show me. And the passage that he showed blew my mind. Because he, he showed me Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 47. And that is very strange because that is a discipleship track passage. <laughs> you get saved, what do you do? You learn to live the life of Christ. In order to live the life of Christ, then it is Acts 2, 42. But not only you live the life of Christ, you also demonstrate the life of Christ, then it is verse 43 to 45. Now, not only you demonstrate the life of Christ, you also need to speak the name of Christ, proclaim the name of Christ, and therefore, the last portion where the Lord was adding to their number, as many were saved daily. And, and I said, Lord, how do I do this? He said, number one, you show them that how they can help people to discover Christ. Number two, show them how they can help people to experience Christ. And number three, help them to share the gospel of Christ. That's my message. That's it. <laughs> and I still have 26 minutes. You know, the first time I preached in FGA, first time, they gave me, I don't know, those days, 45 minutes, one hour. I finished in 10 minutes. Then I did not know what to do. All right, let's read it. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Sometimes we call this a spiritual community. Then verses 43 to 45. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. This is the servant community. They were meeting the needs of the people. Then verse 46 to 47, every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their home and together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for every brother, every sister, and for this congregation. And I pray for your Holy Spirit to work in each and every person's heart this morning, that you'll impress upon them, rekindle something in them, that they will walk out of this sanctuary different, with a heart for you, with a zeal to proclaim the gospel, and Lord, that the Spirit of God will transform them and their families. I pray as this word goes forth, that the word will become life in their own lives. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. amen. Right, we look at the first one. You see, he, he, he talked about means. You know, William Carey, he, before he started the BMS, the Baptist Missionary Society, he actually wrote the use of means for the propagation of the gospel. Means, various means. So here, there are means. The first means I want to show is from Acts chapter 2, verse 42, which basically is, uh, as I said, a discipleship program where how you learn to live the life of Christ. But learning to live the life of Christ can be turned around 
and to become a means to share the gospel with others. And so, you find this, that this is a spiritual community, Acts 242. And what you do there is a fellowship. I, I don't want to go into the details of uh, apostles' teaching and prayer, uh, sorry, uh, fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer, except the fact that the apostles' teaching was based on the Old Testament. They didn't have the New Testament those days. So the Old Testament, and so what is the apostles' teaching? In Luke chapter 24, you can go and read it in several places, uh, Jesus uh, claimed and proclaimed, and rightly so, that the scriptures speak about him. Uh, in, fact, in fact, in the Gospel of John, he, he actually told the Pharisees, you know, you search the scriptures, but they speak about me. <laughs> so it's very interesting. It takes a, 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 a kind of a revelation, as it were, that when you read the Old Testament, you actually encounter Christ. And you need to ask for a revelation, and God will give it to you. And so the apostles' teaching, they were looking at the Old Testament, and they were speaking about Jesus Christ. So this fellowship about the Word of God, this can be turned around into a very powerful means. And something like the Alpha. If you take Alpha, the Alpha movement, that's what they have done. They have taken this part of the Bible, of the Word of God, and put it in that context, and you see many are being rich, but that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about uh, the Discovery Bible story, a story uh, in which you can actually discover Christ for, the, for yourselves. And this Discovery Bible study, uh, what it does is you, you, you can invite people to come in and study the Bible, but not in the way that you and I are accustomed to in the church. No. What it does is this. You have friends, and you have, um, they may not be Christians, you have friends, and they, they may be engaged in some kind of uh, issues. It could be family issues, it could be financial issues, or they're struggling with, with faith or uh, even wanting to know who God is, and you can actually ask them, hey, there is a story about this, what you are struggling with. Would you, and you can quickly tell that story. Would you like to study it with me? And so you invite them into, into this place and, and the Discovery Bible study. And as you study it, you help them to discover Christ for themselves. Well, does it work? It does. You know, in, uh, it is a very powerful means of inviting people and helping people to discover Christ. And in, an example of that, or a testimony, is something that happened in Northeast India. And in Northeast India, a devout couple from an unrich people group actually was invited by a neighbor to attend a DBS, in short, Discovery Bible Study, in their neighbor's house. Now, after two months of hearing God's word, they decided to follow Jesus. After two months. Now, they didn't stop there. Right after that, they started, this couple, they started sharing Jesus with family, with neighbors, friends, and others. They led many to Christ. They also started many DBS groups. The people they are training are also multiplying new DBS groups with new believers. And I got to meet the team that was engaged in this group, you know, sometime in July. And this is what they told me. In 2014, there were a thousand believers. Uh, today, there are 17,000 believers. <laughs> now, honestly, I think no sanctuary can take in 17,000. <laughs> small group, small group, small group, small group. Now, does it work? So. I actually, beginning of the year, uh, I actually begin to experiment this myself. And I want to say, tell you, it works. To date, over nine months, I've actually started 22 disciple-making groups. It works. And you can do it. You, you can actually do this. But you know, your song is great. I like the third song, We Speak Jesus. And so as you study the Word, behind the Word is Jesus Christ. Now, at first I was wondering, do they mean they want to come to study uh, the Scriptures about Jesus? Not everybody. Some may, but not everybody. But how does this one work? According to their needs. According to their needs. I have a group of students uh, who are university students. For them, the DBS, in terms of the Bible passage, I talk about the wisdom. How God gave Solomon wisdom, understanding, and insight. And students want this. 
<laughs> Students want this. And so we begin to study that. And then I said, hey, hey, invite other friends. So other people came in into this group. But as they study this, behind the word stands the figure of Jesus Christ. Eventually they say, we want to follow Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. It's a very powerful means. So the first one, the spiritual community has turned around, around this, this whole means of uh, d- d- discover Bible study or discovery Bible study, helping people to discover Christ for themselves. The second means, Acts chapter 2, verse 43 to 45. You see, not only we have the life of Christ, but we need to demonstrate the life of Christ. And how do we demonstrate? We demonstrate it through the love of Christ, through acts of compassion. You know, it talks about signs and wonders were done by the hands of the apostles. And if you look through the book of Acts, many of those signs and wonders are related to healing. Yes, there are others, but there are many of it. Even if you look through Jesus' ones, many of them, majority of them are about healings. And you can, you know, pray for people who are sick and, and, and really, uh, miracles happen. Really, miracles happen. And, and, and this is amazing. I remember one church leader, I, I'll leave him unnamed, he was actually uh, about to go. And uh, the family had come and, and, and actually said goodbye. They had their sons in Australia, they all came back, and they have said, bye, Dad. Now, he was actually unconscious. He was actually in a coma. So, but they have said their goodbye. It is like end of the road. So they asked, say, Dora, you also come and pray for this person. I might as well tell you, he was my elder, Dr. Anchul, I mean, Brother Anchulai, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, and uh, he, I went there, most of the time when I pray, I pray in the spirit, I pray in understanding, because I really don't know how to pray, so I pray in the spirit most of the time, most of the time, most of the time. Of course, I get understanding, then I, I'll speak the word. And then I prayed, and at the end I said, in the name of Jesus, you will rise up, in the name of Jesus, you'll come to life, in Jesus' name. And then, and then of course, uh, Mrs. Ang was there, and uh, she said, hey, Dorai, I, I already said goodbye, you know, and here you say you will rise up. <laughs> And you know what? He rose up. And he went on to stay for a few months, right? Yeah, it happens. It happens. Healing happens. Amen. Amen. Now, but I can, must also tell you, since I have a little bit of time, <laughs> I must also tell you, I prayed for people and people died. And I remember being very discouraged to a point when somebody is sick and they ask me to pray, I almost like, no, I don't want to. Until the Lord began to tell me, he said, whether the person is healed or not, it's up to me. It's not you. Then I started again. You know, I I started to uh, do that. But I also want to say this. The more I pray for healing, I see more people getting healed. Amen? Amen? More people getting healed. Yes, some people don't seem to get healed, but the more I pray, more people uh, get healed. However, I must say, healing is not confined to this kind of spiritual healing only. It also involves medicine, medical help. In fact, a study was done when Jesus said, heal the sick, the group of Christians, and these are all from Europe, how they interpreted it. The more Pentecostal, charismatic nature, they said, okay, we'll go and pray for the sick anywhere, everywhere, which is fine, valid. But there is another group that said, I'll be a doctor, I'll be a nurse. And so they went on to become doctors and nurses. And that's why that medical profession those days was a profession of compassion. Yes, I hope it still is. Okay, I won't go beyond that, otherwise I may not leave this church. So... Uh, but it was that. We'll become a doctor, we'll become a nurse. And history does that. I mean, you know, the whole interserve actually started out like that. It was Bible and, uh, I think, uh, Bible and medical missions for women. And that's how interserve started. That's all. And so, uh, that is that area. But there's another area, people said, or say, looking at, G- when Jesus said, heal the sick, he said, they'll start hospitals. They'll go and build hospitals and clinics. That is also valid. And there's another area. They said, hey, these diseases that is happening, this can be prevented. So they got into public health as well. 
And so the healing is a spectrum, this whole spectrum, but they're all acts of compassion, demonstra demonstrating the love of Christ. How can we say that God loves them if you do not demonstrate his love through acts of compassion? The other area is uh, helping the poor and needy. They were selling their possessions. They were selling their possessions to help uh, one another. Now, <laughs> I remember one commentary, reading a commentary on that one. And you know how these things happen. They said, oh, this is culturally, that's why, but now it no longer applies. It's not true. It applies. Filled with the Spirit, it applies. Amen? Amen. 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 I've seen people, how they have given away things just to, uh, to help. So, uh, that, that is act of kindness. You know, by the way, no point holding our money, right? Because when we die, you know, as pastors, we have done a lot of funerals, right? So, they, I, I, I've conducted funerals for very, very rich persons as well. They didn't carry away anything for themselves. <laughs> Looks like some, it's a revelation for some of you. <laughs> so, while you have it, give it to missions, it goes the furthest. Yeah. Amen? And so... Uh, it is this, this act, and this can be from orphanages to homes to all kinds of things. But I, I would like to, um, though I have examples of our own, but I want to share one particular one. We had a, a sister who went to Nepal from our church. Her burden was to help women infected with AIDS or HIV. These women, Nepali women, were tra trafficked into India uh, and, you know, into, into brothels. And then when they got sick, they were kind of... Uh, I'm saying brought back, but basically they were dumped back in Nepal. The villagers didn't want to take them. Even the own families shunned them. The government at that time was so impoverished that they didn't know what to do with these victims. And there comes Wailing. And she starts a small home called Sharon Home and begins to minister to them. And you know, everyone who came there, they got saved, though many of them did not live long but they got saved. And the work caught the attention of the Christian community and the people there, that one of the pastors, when I went to visit her, told me, Dorai, before Wailing, these women were nobody. But after Wailing came, they became somebody. Wow, that is very powerful. And so, this whole area of compassion helped them to experience the love of Christ. Sometimes, we cannot preach the gospel, not for any other reason. They need to experience the love of Christ themselves. Amen? Amen. There was a, a, a person who was very resistant to the gospel. Very, very resistant. In fact, when you say you're a Christian, you say, oh, you're brainwashed. Well, a, a certain situation arose where he had to send his daughter to college, and he was in financial uh, difficulty. So one of the family members who was a Christian began to help him financially for over a period of two years. You know, at the end of two years, he came to faith because the love of God opened his heart Amen. to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Love conquers all. Amen. Amen. And that is still the key for Malaysia. Love conquers all. Uh, Amen? Yeah. So to some people, we may not preach directly, but we can show them Love. All right. The last one. Now, how many of you are very happy with the last one? <laughs> that means we are coming to an end. Acts chapter 2, verses 46 to 47. Remember, they are meeting in, in homes, and they, were, uh, and they were, the Lord was adding to their number daily as those were saved. Wow, this is very powerful. They were sharing the gospel. So the first one, the, there was this discover, uh, discovery Bible study helping people to discover Christ for themselves. The second one, acts of compassion, uh, helping people to experience Christ for themselves. And the third means is sharing the gospel directly. That means speaking the name of Jesus Christ, speaking uh, the gospel as it were, and helping people to receive Christ. You know, just about uh, today is Sunday. On Tuesday, I led my classmate to the Lord. This classmate of mine, I had not met for the last 52 years. Yeah, so we had a reunion, and I remember sharing the gospel with him. 
and he said he needs time to think. And of course, given all the time, then Tuesday I called him up uh, and asked him, so I said, are you ready to receive Christ? Oh, my friend, uh, he has not taken me to church yet. And that day I went to church, the pastor didn't say anything. I told my friend, you can receive Christ here and now. Can I? Can? <laughs> you know, people want to believe in Christ and people want to receive Christ, but they don't know how. Yes. There was a sister who used to come to our church and during our interview for water baptism, I asked her, so tell me your testimony. How did you receive Christ? She couldn't tell me, but he said, I'm a Christian. I said, why are you a Christian? Because I come to church every Sunday. And so then there, I shared the gospel and then led her to receive Christ. So you share the gospel and lead them to receive Christ. And I found a way to do it very effectively. Because it says here that the, that the Lord added to their number daily as those who were saved. Daily, daily, daily. Now this, this, this boggles my mind. Because uh, very often about evangelism, I usually preach. I, I'm called to preach in groups, in large groups, small groups. Usually it's preaching. You know, I'll take a portion of the scripture and then expand on it and then make an altar call and so some people get saved. Now, daily? Now, it's not possible to have evangelistic campaigns daily. That's not, not possible. But I remember in one of my, in 2017, I had an experience with the Holy Spirit so powerful that uh, when I came out of that conference in our church, the word that came to me was, keep the gospel central. But I want you to understand this. When you say keep the gospel central, that means you should be able to share the gospel every day. That means personal evangelism. Now, I've shared the gospel one-to-one, -one, but not in a big way, you know. I have always moved on the preaching side. Then I looked at the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, the word preaching, proclaiming, and speak the gospel are used in, in the book of Acts. But interestingly, the word proclaim is used eight times. The word preach is used 14 times. But the word speak and tell is used 61 times. Translated, seven out of 10 times in the book of Acts, they are speaking the gospel. They are speaking the gospel. It means ordinary people are speaking the gospel. Actually, in the original language, the word speaking or telling means gossiping the gospel. You know, gossip, no problem. <laughs> Especially for our sisters. But the latest research says men gossip just as much. <laughs> so they were gossiping the gospel, gossiping. And I said, hey, if that is the case, then I must get a tool. And you know, the Lord actually led me to this whole thing about EE. You know, I've heard about EE, never really got into it because I had my own means. But I look into EE. And the long and short of it was, I'm able to share the gospel with five points, just in my five fingers, you know, five fingers. I remember, it is so effective, I can tell you this, that as I, if I were to share with the gospel to 10 people, 10 different people at 10 different times, seven people get saved. Yeah. And so, hey, is it working, is it working because it's Dorai? Or is it somebody else? So I went and talked to the pastors. It's very difficult to convince pastors. <laughs> and so we got the pastors especially the Tamil pastors. These all are trained. Some of them hold masters, by the way. And so uh, I, I told them, hey, can you do this? And next week I'll come and check with you. And then they went and did it. And the long and short of it was I gave them a month, though every week I, sh I, I, I checked with them. They, they shared with 33 people in that month, and 21 people got saved. No evangelistic meeting. And one of the pastors taught this to one of the church members who was a nurse. And that nurse led six people to the Lord all in one week. Yeah, it works. So I, 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 you know, I went to Australia uh, for a holiday, and I was wondering, will it work here? Well, I led two people to the Lord. One was in a restaurant, another one was in a supermarket. By the way, people whom I already know, so I, I, I led them. Then does it work elsewhere? So I went to China. I'll, I'll, I'll put that place uh, name. I mean, I won't leave, leave the place unnamed. And I, I went to that place, and then 12 people got saved. Yeah. And this is not a meeting, you know, or telling, no, 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 no. You, you talk to people, 12 people get saved. I said, wow. You know, my, I taught this to, the daughter, to my daughters, and they have learned it very well. Over MCO, Joanna and Esther in Chiraz, they have a, they have a satellite church there. Over the MCO, they led 160 people to the Lord. 
And today, they are baptizing people every other week. That is Acts chapter 2, verse 47. They are sharing the gospel. You know, Joanna is very interesting because she, she, went, she was headhunted for a job about, about two, three years ago. Uh, yeah, she was headhunted for a job uh, and one year ago. Then. One year ago, she was headhunted for a job. And she, she already had a job. Why should she go for another job? But anyway, she was headhunted. So she went and had the interview. And at the end of the interview, she asked, uh, the interviewer asked, do you have any questions? She said, yes. <laughs> and then she asked the two diagnostic questions of EE. <laughs> do you know for sure that you'll be with God in heaven when you die? And the second question is this, if you were to stand before God and God were to ask you, tell me, why should I allow you into heaven, what would you say? Of course, he had no answer. And then she shared all the five points of the gospel. Of course, he did not receive the Lord then, but you know, he persisted. One year later, he recruited her into his company. And later when he was asked, why did you recruit her, he said, if a girl had that kind of audacity to ask those kind of questions, she better work for me here. <laughs> and, and, she, and she's doing very well. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm telling you, my friends, that each and every one of you, if you can be equipped with, to share the gospel, you can go across the road, go across the street, go across the city, go across the state, go across the seas, and you'll see people coming to faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, the, finally, it says here that uh, uh, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be safe. But Romans 14, from where that, that verse comes from, he says, for how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Let the gospel go and speak the name of Jesus over foreign tribes and peoples. And the life of God will come forth in every land. Amen.